My name is Charlotte and I'm an art student at the Milan Art Institute. I'm taking the online master program and I'm currently in the mixed media slash find your voice section and I'm really excited to share this with you. I will be going over the first five weeks of the mixed media section and kind of explaining what we did but not in too much detail, mostly because there was just so much information in the voice section. We had probably at least an hour every week, but most weeks we had more than an hour of footage to watch on the voice section and there's no way I could share it all and I don't really want to. I feel like this is something you should really experience for yourself. Yeah. I'm really excited. Also, a little disclaimer is that I'm an art student. I haven't found my voice yet, but I'm getting much closer. And at the end of the video, I'll share a little bit about where I'm at with my voice, or at least where I think I'm at. But yeah, just wanted to have said that. Let's hop in. We first had a bit of an introduction into the voice section, partially by learning a lot about our history, which was really interesting and very inspiring to learn about all of the people that came before us. I had personally taken some art history classes during high school and university and it just was never taught to me in this way and it was yeah really well done, really beautifully done. We also talked about why today is the best time to be an artist and how art has evolved from only being available in sacred places to very wealthy people, to government institutions and universities and libraries, to middle class homes and eventually onto the streets and onto people's bodies and how art currently is everywhere around us and how it's easier than ever to have your art be seen by many people and yeah, that was very inspiring as well. Ellie explained that your artistic voice as an artist is the combination of your process, your style, and your aesthetic. And we'll be going over that a little bit more, but I just wanted to explain the process a little bit. So your process, according to our teacher, is everything from the way you find inspiration to how you create your sources to how you physically actually lay down the paint to what materials you enjoy using. So that was week one. In the second week, we dove really deep into our personal aesthetic. I've shared it before in a different video, but we created these different boards on Pinterest, and one of them was called our personal aesthetic board, and we had to pin images that really deeply resonated with us, and not just something you thought was kind of beautiful, but something that really made you feel something. And this was a really interesting process, especially in the beginning, I felt like I had no idea why I was pinning the images that I was pinning. And after I started diving deeper into the topics of these images, I found similarities and synchronicities and it all started to make sense. So this was actually a really important step in the process. And my personal aesthetic board is something that I still use a lot to find inspiration or to kind of get back to who I am and what I love and all of that. Something else Ellie explained that I thought was really important to understand is that what you find beautiful is not random. There's a reason why you find the things beautiful that you do. And she had this beautiful quote that I would love to read to you. So here it is. You are connecting what you find visually beautiful to a deeper inner meaning that goes back to your childhood experiences, the things you've overcome, your passions, and what excites you. It speaks to your core, your beliefs, your passions. It speaks to your purpose and what you're on earth to do. And I don't even know what to say. Hearing these things, pretty much on a weekly basis at this point is so inspiring and I don't know, Ellie and Demetra both are just such wonderful teachers and it makes me feel really grateful for being where I'm at and I do feel like in a way I'm living my purpose and doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So yeah, I just wanted to share that with you because I thought it was beautiful. Something else really important that we talked over in this week was personal symbolism and personal symbols. And 
these basically are either things that you are very drawn to or things that keep coming back in your art. And this was really interesting to think about. I felt in the beginning, even when I was looking at my personal aesthetic board, that I couldn't really determine what my personal symbols are, but looking at it now deeper, I can definitely see them. I feel like some are very specific and some are a little bit more loose, but I just wanted to give you some examples. So for instance, I have noticed that on my aesthetic board, I have a lot of books and I think this actually goes back to my childhood to going to the library with my mom and picking new books so often and I was not a very rebellious child but the one thing that I did that I at the time thought was very rebellious was stay up really late with my book and a little light and read. <laughs> I would just read all night and yeah this is something that's very special to me. I've also always really enjoyed studying and you know just the feel of books in your hand. I've never really been drawn to a Kindle or something like that. I love the physical feeling of a book and flipping the pages and everything about books. So it makes sense that that comes back a lot. But something that maybe a little bit less obvious was that Whenever I created an abstract, especially in the first few weeks of the oil and drawing section, I used a lot of circles and wavy lines, and I didn't really understand why it was sort of an intuitive thing that I did, but looking at the meanings of these things, it makes a little bit more sense to me. So I looked up what circles represent, and they represent a wholeness and natural sense of completion, it is considered a symbol of unity. It is also the symbol of infinity without beginning or end. Perfect, the ultimate geometric symbol. And I thought that was really beautiful. And then wavy lines are associated with the ocean or water, which can be highly calming and spiritual. A wavy line can represent a flowing nature and a natural rhythm, which again, I thought was so beautiful. Something else I've noticed is that the first few paintings where I could pick my own topic, so the final assignment of oil and drawing, the first assignment in the mixed media section, and then in week two I also did this, but I drew or painted birds. And it's interesting because I love animals and they're a big passion of mine, but out of the animal kingdom, I'm not necessarily that drawn to birds. There are other animals that I would probably pick over them. But for some reason, I was so drawn to painting these birds. And looking back now, I feel like it was kind of symbolic of me taking flight, especially since the first two were sitting and on a human hand. And the last one was flying away. And yeah, I don't think I understood it as I was painting it. But looking back now, it looks a little bit more clear. So those are some things I wanted to share with you. I don't know if all the spiritual stuff resonates with everyone, but yeah, it's very special to me and it's just all coming together now. It's really interesting looking back, especially at all of these things. In week three, we went over archetypes and this was really interesting as well. We did a personality test I thought was really interesting and we read a bunch of descriptions to see what resonated most with us. And I don't really want to share too much of this with you because I feel like this is something you should really experience yourself if you're looking for it. But that being said, I actually had done this test a little bit earlier in a mastery program because there is like a brand identity type test that you can just find on Google that I had done that is pretty much the same thing as what is in here. And yeah, I'll link it down below if you're interested, but it was really interesting to look into this. And at the time that I was doing it, I didn't quite understand why. I mean, personality tests are always really fun, but these tests are based around your brand. And at this stage in the program, it's all still really broad, but I'm assuming that we'll dive deeper into these at a later time and kind of pick one specific one that you're going to go with as your brand and how you represent yourself online or as an artist in general. And yeah, it's really interesting. In case you're wondering 
The four that resonated most with me were the innocent, the sage, the everman, and the caregiver. But that being said, if you haven't done any sort of test, you may not know what these are. So yeah, I figured I'd leave that a little bit open, but it's very interesting for sure. Week four was kind of life-changing, at least I thought so. We went into disc assessment and temperament, and this is something that I've actually done not just in art. It's, it's a personality thing that is really widespread and that a lot of people adhere to. It's basically this little disc, I guess, a circle, with four pizza slices, and they all have a different letter. So we have the D, the I, the C, and the S and they all stand for a different temperament. And they are the dominant temperament, the influential, the compliant, and steady. And these are so interesting. I would highly recommend you dive deeper into this, especially if you're in the program, because it really starts to make sense as to why you lay down paint in the way that you do, why you have a certain way of working at your painting or looking at sources or doing anything really it has a lot to do with how you are in life and just your processes from day to day the disc is also divided in a task oriented side and a people oriented side in which the d and the c is more task oriented and the i and the s are more people oriented and also the top half of the circle is more I'd probably say extroverted and the bottom half is more introverted. So that's also really interesting. I'll read the words to you that are associated with each letter so you have a little bit of a better idea. But yeah, these are easily found online too. And I just thought this was really interesting as well. So the D is dominant, decisive, determined, and definite. The I is impulsive, interesting, intuitive, and instant. The S is slow, soft, still, simplicity, silent, and stealth. And the C is calculated, accurate, systematic, and contemplative. So these are all of those four pizza slices and the words that are associated with them, I guess. But in the program, Ellie dives really deeply into all of these and what it actually means to fit into one of these pizza slices and yeah, it's super interesting. In case you're wondering, I think I'm somewhere between an S and a C. I think my personality or my temperament in life is pretty much fully an S, but the way I work is a C, so we'll see <laughs> where I go with this. You may not 100% fit into one of these pizza slices, which is totally normal, so you usually, according to L, you are mostly one pizza slice and then you have a little bit from the one that's on your left and on your right, but hardly any from the one opposite to you. I thought that was just super interesting and really enlightening and it is super helpful to look at your own process and see why you do things in a particular way. And I can now look at paintings and be like, oh, you must be an I or you must be a D. And yeah, that is just, it has been so much fun and really enlightening to look a little bit deeper into yourself and why you are the way that you are and paint the way that you paint or yeah. In the final week, we went really deep into subjects and symbols. So if you remember some of the symbolism that I mentioned, in this week, we went really deep into that and we looked at what sort of imagery we're drawn to or what sort of subjects we're drawn to and then just dive really, really deep because chances are you're not just drawn to painting animals. You're probably drawn to specific animals and even those specific animals, you're probably more drawn to depicting them in a particular way. So let's say you really love the look of a running horse or a climbing monkey, something like that. Something very specific, whereas a sleeping lion might not be that interesting to you. So these are very specific and it really is eye-opening to see this kind of come together where you're starting to see that, oh, I love portraits, but I particularly love portraits of men and they usually have their eyes closed and they're looking away from the camera or something like that. Like these things are really important to look at and I would definitely say 
just put your all into it, really look a little bit further than maybe you think you should, and it will definitely pay off, I think. Looking at all of this in a lot of depth and just putting your all into it is so life-changing. I, yeah, I'm really just so happy with this program and so excited about where this will bring me. You may have noticed that I didn't go into all of the topics really in depth because, well, one, I don't want to give away all of their secrets. I just want to let you know what I'm working on. And two, I think you just kind of have to go through it yourself. It's hard for me to sit here and explain what's going on. I think it's all really personal and all I can do is give my own examples, so I hope it was still helpful to you. I'd love to share a little bit about where I think I'm at with my process and where I think I'm at with my voice because I feel like I am slowly getting closer. I, in the beginning, didn't really feel like I was going anywhere with it and I still feel pretty lost in all honesty, but that being said, Ellie is very vocal about the fact that she feels like we should be painting the other side of our pain and something that I've really struggled with is the concept of home. I Don't get me wrong, I had a wonderful home life as a child and I still have a wonderful home life now, but what I really mean is that I feel like home is not so much a place, it's more of a feeling and I moved halfway across the world to be with my husband and things haven't always been easy. I definitely felt out of place at times and feeling home sometimes was very difficult, especially without my family. And I think what I would love for my paintings to do for other people is to give a sense of peace and a sense of home. And I think that's kind of where I'm at with it. I, I mean, I could go much deeper into it, but yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at so far. I've noticed that I love really neutral and earthy colors. I don't generally go for the really bright fluorescent paints. I do have them and I've tried them, but I mostly love realism and I love more calming compositions, compositions where there's not so much going on. And I think all of this comes back to a sense of peace and calm, which I love and I think suits my personality really well. And it's definitely something I've come to by trying so many different art styles, different materials, different paints, different colors. And I think that is a really important tip too, that if you want to find your artistic voice or style, you should paint a lot. I think at the end of the day, that is actually the most important part of this. You should be painting constantly, try all new things, and really take note of what you love and what you don't, and definitely push yourself, but also stay true to who you are. I've noticed that, especially in the mixed media section, I was veering off so far from what I love and how I love to paint that it was a little bit demotivating at times which I haven't really experienced that much in this program so far but if you're working on a painting that just isn't you it can be really draining emotionally and just you know energetically so I think that is really important. I also feel like this digital part of the program is so interesting, so important, and in just five weeks, I feel like I've come so far. I, I just, <laughs> I cannot explain it. I feel like even after talking to my coach, I just feel like I've gotten so much closer to what my voice or style is, and I didn't have any of that in the first few months of this program because we, we didn't pick our own sources at the time, and we were just really going deep into more classical theories, which I loved for the record. I thought that was wonderful and very important, but it's really interesting now to see how in just five weeks, something like this can develop. That being said, yeah, I'm definitely not there yet. I honestly don't really know where to go from here either. So what I'm going to do is just keep painting and keep trying and I'll keep looking at my personal aesthetic and hopefully getting a little bit closer every week to how I'm supposed to be painting, what I'm supposed to be painting and why I'm supposed to be painting it.
I think that was all I had to say. I really appreciate you for being here and I hope this was helpful in some way or maybe you just enjoyed listening to what I'm doing. But yeah, thank you. I hope to see you next week. Bye. I'm just gonna sit in my lap. All right. Can't really do the video like this though, okay? You gotta move. Too, but I'm not done yet. We're done. Gets to move. Come on. I love you though. Further. <laughs>